This is Joseph Chocom at TCAF 2015 on behalf of Becca Hilburn's art process blog, Keep on Trucking Nato Soup. If you could introduce yourself, please. Yes, hi, my name is Casey Van Hyas. I am the uh, creative director and writer for Date Naito. Uh, okay. We are a visual novel company here at TCAF. Um, we came in uh, for the Comics versus Games exhibit here. Uh, they were specifically looking for people who had a good sort of marriage between comics and games. Um, right. And we felt so, uh, as a lot of um, a lot of our staff is uh, former comics people or have worked in comics in the past, uh, and the actual format of visual novels feels really like a natural fit for comics. So we uh, submitted it, and they agreed, and so here we are today. Awesome. Uh, so TCAF, um, so this isn't like a, a game for at a conventional like anime convention or anything like that because like you said it is focused more on people who are at least in some way uh, related to the comics field. Yeah, yeah, they specifically were looking for, for, com or for games that were in some way related to it and we felt as, as people who work on comics you can't get more related than that I think yeah. and, and with a game that is a direct, um, a direct property of a comic then it, it seems like a natural fit, so. Okay, uh, and are the games you work on more adaptations of physical um, comics or it uh, depends. web comics, or are um, they their own thing? We work with creators. Uh, yeah. the, the game that we have right now, we're working with Hamlet Machine, who does Starfighter, um, which is an adult comic about uh, space and romance. Um, and she had approached us about making a visual novel. It's actually a side story or sort of an alternate universe take of it. So you can play it without having read the comic. You can right. read the comic without having to play the game. So they're not, it's not required, but it does enhance the characters because a lot of the characters from the comic show up in it, but there are also new ones. So it's a little of both. It's a little directly related, but it's also kind of a side adaptation. Um, we are also okay. working on original properties. We have a game called Puzzle Cat that we are um, coming out with here. Uh, I'm not sure, is that gonna? Sure. Okay. So we have a game called Hustle Cat as well, which is in a totally original game about working in a cat cafe and uh, finding love and mystery. Uh, it's sort of an urban fantasy story, so we'll be working on that. We do have a couple of others in the future. Um, I myself have a comics background. I'm the writer of Hustle Cat. I worked on a comic called Winters in Lavelle for about five years. So um, I kind of came from that background. And our art director, Lindsay, who's also here, is, uh, has worked on a comic with me as well. Uh, we did one called Parasite Nights, and we are working with other comics creators. We are in talks with a few other well-known web comics artists to maybe do games with them in the future. Awesome. Not necessarily of their properties or their comics, but of original ideas that are specifically made for the visual novel medium, um, because it's, it's close to comics because you are telling a story with pictures and words. Yeah. Um, and but it you is also in a sequential kind of nature. Yeah, yeah, but there's also added um, uh, added elements to it, like the animation and the sound are additional storytelling. Um, yep. But the big thing that changes with it is the option to have choices. So um, a lot of visual novels are done as sort of choose your own adventure stories, and yeah. that's the format that we follow for ours. They don't necessarily have to. There are games that just tell a story from start to finish in that format, um, but we More like the a, potential. like motion comic sort of? Kind of like that. So that is an option as well, but we yeah. like the potential of the, the branching storylines. Yeah. And since we um, are date Naito, uh, all of our games have some kind of romance element to it. So yeah. the romance element is usually the choice structure that you follow. Um, like depending on what you answer, what kind of personality you display as you uh, go through the game might attract a certain person in the game uh, and you might end up with romantic scenes with that character. Right, and really um, cater your experience of the story based on yeah. what you want at the time. Yeah, yeah, so if you're after like the sassy waiter, you can you can kind of like banter and then that might be more attractive to them than like the really shy barista or something like that, or you can just choose to be mean to people if you don't want anything to do with them. And yeah. it affects not just that, but it affects the overall story as well. So. Um, depending on which it is, uh, both of both of the games that we have right now um, op operate in very similar ways in, in that regard. Okay, and are you primarily targeting uh, with with your stories comics people or game people, or you find there's not much of a difference between um, the two? The visual novel market is kind of a wild west right now, uh, yeah. where we're trying to find a steady foothold in both comics and games. Where I think there are a lot of comics people who are afraid of game development, and I think there are a lot of 
yes, a lot of comics people are afraid of game development, and a lot of yeah. games people who aren't familiar with comics. So I'm hoping this kind of bridges the gap between the two, and we can start showing um, the world of each to the opposite side and sort of bring them together a little more. I got because I think this is a really good stepping stone in between the two. So. Yeah, and you were talking about a game engine earlier, or you were talking about an engine earlier. Um, I, obviously, that entails the the game engine, but were you also trying to create a like community or a platform where you could more easily pair artists uh, and developers? Yes. Okay. Yeah, um, it's a little further down the line. We do want to get a couple of our own games out first to, to kind of iron out the kinks in the system. Yeah. Uh, but we do eventually want to release HTML VM, our engine, uh, to to the public as an open source um, uh, engine to make visual novels and things like that and offer support to people who want to create their own games in the future. Okay. But, um, and you're encouraging the artists themselves to do this or you're thinking they're more going to outsource that to a developer? I'd like to see the artists work with um, the program. We want to make it so that people who aren't You'll, you'll need a degree of, of programming knowledge, I think. I, I don't think that's avoidable entirely yeah. when you get into games, but we want to make it approachable so that it's not... You don't have to stare at a block of code and then get scared away by it, because I know for me that that's really intimidating. But once I actually got in it, um, and once I started working with HTML, HTMLVN and doing some scene direction and things like that, it's actually not that bad. Um, so we just want to make that a little friendlier. We want to put a, a nice user interface on it um, to make it usable to other people. And it might be a good way to encourage people to learn coding in the first place. I find right. usually that having sort of a stepping stone like that can really bring people into it and maybe find a passion for them they didn't know they had. I mean, I know for sure I never expected to get into game development, and here I am, so... <laughs> yeah, um, and the great thing about HTML5 is it's can basically... I assume the engine's based on HTML5. It is, yes. It, it can run on virtually any platform. I yes. imagine you can uh, have it on consoles, you can have it on... Yes, um, yes. Mobile devices. Or yep. And that was the, the almost entirely the reason we did it. Um, yep. We're looking into uh, cloud saves as well um, because we want to uh, be able to start a game on a PC and then if you have to leave for work and you're getting on the subway, you can just load up your save on your phone and continue from where you left off. Yep. Um, I know that was a big thing for our, our co-founder, Conrad Kraling, who is our lead programmer, our only programmer. <laughs> Um, where he was playing a lot of visual novel games for research for these, and, and that was something that stuck with him a lot, because uh, being from New York, we all have really long commutes, and we spent a lot of time on the train, and it would be yeah. good to be able to pick up the same game that you were playing instead of having to play one on one platform and then say, well, now it's train time, so I have to play the, ga the game that I have on the Vita. Um, so we want to be able to offer an answer for that as well. And yeah, the only limit is browsers, so um, yeah. we don't have to worry about it being PC only, which a lot of uh, VNs right now are. Um, a lot of the companies coming out of Japan really only develop for PC, so even on a Mac you can't use it, uh, much less mobile or, yeah. or handheld devices of any kind or consoles. So that was something that we are trying to build a strong foundation for so that we can branch out and be as versatile as possible. But, so okay. That's something we're working and on. Would you have any advice to artists who are considering either creating their own visual novel or uh, adapting... Uh, an existing novel into a visual novel? Um, I would say to study visual novels, play as many as you can. Um, there are a yeah. lot more that are coming out now in the States. Uh, there are some games that have elements of them that people don't think of it. Uh, the Danganronpa series is yeah. big. Um, the uh, No Escape, uh, I think 999 and Virtue's Last Reward. Yeah. Um, learn how choice trees work and draw out your choice trees because that's the big, that was the biggest thing for me. Everything else felt fairly natural in adapting it. Um, it's more like playwriting or comics writing than novel writing, in how I approach it at least, but you can write it as a novel. Um, I would just say that if you want to make a branching story, just make sure you track the branches because it's very, very easy to get really caught up in how much potential is in the system and then you are just going all over the place with it and you've bitten off more than you can chew. Um, but there are a lot of resources to get started. Uh, I would say just keep that in mind. Just draw it out on a piece of paper. Um, there are a lot of uh, resources that already exist. Um, since HTMLVN is not ready yet, uh, there's uh, RenPy is a popular one. Uh, it's done in Python, so that can be a little more of a complicated um, yeah. programming language. It does have 
a fairly user-friendly interface to pick up and just do a fairly basic one. Um, Twine is another popular storytelling tool. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily for visual novels as in the traditional sense, but there are a lot of branching interactive stories that come out of it that are really creative and really, really exciting. And that's yeah. HTML and JavaScript, so as, if I remember correctly, I could be wrong about that. I believe it um, is. I haven't played too many Twine games, but I know a lot of people who have. So. Yeah, I've only played, I think... I've only finished one. I played Horsemaster by uh, Tom McHenry, who's another comic artist, and it's phenomenal. Um, but he did a lot with it, and you can tell that he is familiar with with some degree of HTML and JavaScript and things like that, so he, he took it pretty far. Um, yeah, and maybe just learn a little bit of coding, just so you can understand, and maybe, even if you get another developer, just understand how to talk to them about it. Yeah. Um, go to, like, Code Academy or something like that and take an HTML class and... Uh, I feel like as webcomic artists, though, we probably have a familiarity with HTML. Just from um, I know I your learned, website. Yeah, I had to learn a lot by building a website. I had to learn CSS and all that fun stuff. So it was something that I had a bit of a background in. And even just that building a website was enough to jump in and be able to talk to my programmer and yeah. say, this is what I want to do. And then he could show me something and I could say, OK, this is good. I can pick this up. I can learn from this. So that's pretty much it, is, is just reach out. Um, and, uh, and get in there and get your hands dirty. Yeah. Uh, so what about on the animation and on the sound side? Um, obviously at TCAF it's, it's a little difficult with everything going on to give someone an auditory experience, but yeah. I imagine sound is a, a big part of visual novels. Yes. Um, yeah. Would you recommend that someone do a lot of research and uh, in their first game try to devote like a very rich experience uh, for their first game or is it better just to focus on the decision making and the static art for the first game? I would say pace yourself with it. Um, music for us is the toughest because that's the one thing I think we don't have somebody who immediately came to mind for. Like a lot of this stuff kind of came together but as comic artists I don't know a lot of composers. Uh, yeah. So, But there are a lot of people out there who work, are willing to work with you, um, are excited to work on the project. We, we hired a really really talented uh, composer and I feel awful I cannot remember his name right now for <laughs> Starfighter um, okay. but he did a fantastic job um, we have somebody who did a vocal opening for it um, but I would say to, to be measured with it you don't have to get too carried away with with the audio section of it, with the animation. You don't necessarily need all of that to create a finished game. Um, it can help, uh, but it's also like doing a color comic versus a black and white comic. Like, you can tell the same story in black and white, um, yeah. or you can tell it in color. It's just the amount of time or, or effort or resources you have to connect to that. Yeah. So. It's just a different kind of experience. Yeah, yeah, that's all. Um, it just changes the experience a little bit. Is voice acting something that uh, you, your engine is looking into doing in the future? Or that's uh, we'd like to in the future. We don't have the means for it right now. Um, but in the future, that's something that we want to be able to branch out to. And, and as our budget allows it, um, we, we do want to explore that in the future. Okay. I know some visual novels that are coming out here do have it. Um, and they specifically planned for it. Uh, but we, yeah. we decided for our first few games that we wanted to make sure that everything else was, was ready before we jumped into... Uh, biting off more than we could chew. So yeah. we, we didn't really want to overcommit ourselves to something and have all these actors involved and then find out that we had trouble with it, especially because it's HTML and it's loaded on a web page. We wanted to keep the size of it fairly small until we get um, a couple more things streamlined with our with our engines. So. Yeah, and then you have to do all kinds of things like loading things just in time. And yes. it can probably yeah. be a little bit hairy on the development yeah. side and yeah. also expensive on the voice acting side. Yeah, so. yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> but that is something we are very interested in doing in the future. So. Okay. Uh, would you have any advice to an artist who's hoping to work with a game developer um, that uh, has a, a comics background, obviously, but mm -hmm. maybe hasn't done any um, either pixel art or sequential art for video games? Uh, just communicate with the writer. Uh, if you are the writer, then that's fantastic. Communicate with your programmer and make sure that you know their limits and they know your limits. Um, make sure you're all on the same page with it. I've seen some visual novels where uh, they'll say the sky was a hazy orange and it's just a blue background. It's like a blue sky with no clouds. Yeah. And you can tell that it's because there was no communication between the artist and the development team. So just keep that line of communication open. Uh, don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to say that you don't think something is clear. And 
if you don't want to do something in particular, that's pretty much it. Everything else is just, we do all of our assets in Photoshop, basically, um, yeah. with layering and things like that. And there are a lot of neat tricks we learn from other games and how to do that and how to maximize it. Um, but you can just make like a transparent PNG of a character and throw that in front of the background and you, you already made a start at it. So. Okay. Uh, would you have any advice to a game developer who's uh, considering attending TCAF for the first time? I would recommend it. Um, okay. Comics versus game is is getting bigger. Uh, it was it's a lot bigger than it was last year, and I think it's going to get bigger still. Um, there's also Bit Bazaar, which happens a couple yeah. of miles away, uh, which is entirely video game focused. It's just a one day event. Right. Um, and a lot of really good developers show up there and show off their games. Uh, That's not always the same time as TCAF, though, is it? I think not. I don't think necessarily, but it tends to fall pretty close. The past yeah. two years, it's been the same Saturday. Yeah. Uh, and it's open way later than TCAF, so you can finish up a TCAF and yeah, then go. I know to someone who went there last night after. Yeah, after yeah, TCAF. I did that last year. This year, I didn't get the opportunity to, but last year I went over there. And we got yeah. to see a lot of really cool games. Um, so I would say definitely show up and. Uh, as a developer, it's also really cool to see people in comics. You might meet your next artist there. Okay. So. And where could we find your work online? Uh, DateNighto.com. It's D-A-T-E-N-I-G-H-T-O. Okay. And we have information.